Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today my guest is Wang Feng Dengdo, who is a filmmaker. So do watch the whole video, like the video, subscribe to my. Uh, so the first question is like, what inspired you to become a filmmaker, sir? Or if you could tell the whole journey from your childhood to what inspired you? Yeah, I think um, there there are quite a few significant events, um, and I'll just mention the ones that have been really instrumental as far as my. Filmmaking and artistic journey is concerned. One of them was when I was about, I would imagine, like eight or nine, or maybe seven for that matter. And um, I saw this entire neighborhood being burnt in front of my eyes. You know, um, because Shillong was was witnessing its fair share of race riots, and um, it left it left such a huge impression. Um, because, like I said, I was I was a child, and um, 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 yeah, and, and I remember seeing those. Um, flames rise up in the air, and I knew deep down inside that there was, this was this was something that was not right, you know. So that was one. Um, the second was, of course, when I left Shillong and I was out of Shillong, you know, and I suddenly um, was a minority, so to say, in 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 a, in a larger place, you know, and I was suddenly confronted. Um, um, with so many different identities, you know, I was in South India for a while. I was in, I was in um, North of India. And then, of course, um, you know, studying in Jamia because you know it was it was a it was a university that was in a Muslim neighborhood, and I and, and you know I was a minority within a minority, you know. And I think that meant that it was a huge amount of um, introspection that happened. And then, of course, finally, um, when I this was, of course, when I had already started making films. But in twenty sixteen, I also lost my eye. You know, I, I can't see with one eye, and um, it 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 perhaps it, it was it was a point of time when I perhaps looked at the world differently, not just metaphorically speaking, but also physically speaking. <laughs> it's like no longer wide angle, it's more like telly, telly, and at the same time, that same year was also the year that my daughter was born. So I would say those are the three significant moments in my life that really have shaped the way I look at the world, and and I also address my films. Uh, so you went out from Sri Lanka for study, graduation. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, you know, this was in the nineties. You know, so everyone from Sri Lanka, from you know, an, a, a middle class family. I le I left Sri Lanka during the nineties. You know, and, and everyone uh, from Sri Lanka. During that period of time, who had young children would send their kids outside because militancy was sort of asserting itself, and like any other middle class anxiety driven parents, uh, my parents also sent me outside. But when we reached um, these these other places in 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 you know, the other parts of the country, we sort of ghettoized. You know? We we came together because we found this kind of I was I would say like. You know, Safety in numbers, or this this kind of a uh, uh, um, natural tendency to gravitate more and more towards your own kind. You know, the further you're away from home. So yeah. Okay. So what did you study like in your during graduation days? <laughs> I studied science. In fact, um, you know, I I studied science, and um, you know, I even ventured as far as even doing like a course in biotechnology. And I think that. Um, the Indian education system, at least at that point of time, and I think even to a certain degree now as well, has always bifurcated these different departments. You know, and, and the, the more and more I, um, or, or rather today, when when you know when I'm having done films for more than twenty years, you know, um, those overlaps are so, the overlaps between humanities and science is is so pronounced. You know that um, that I think that no artist can be um, can be successful without understanding science, and no scientist could be successful um, without understanding art. You know, and, and this is you know something that's happened over centuries and centuries. Like, is is Michelangelo a scientist or, or an artist? Is Leonardo da Vinci a scientist or an artist? You know, in fact, Michelangelo um, grabbed hold of intestine so that he could understand human anatomy. You know? So, whereas in our Indian education system, you know, because it's so driven by this idea of of how you would present your child in in a social gathering, 
that the idea of knowledge is is very skewed you know um, 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 the idea of presenting a child is much much more important than the idea of actually acquiring knowledge so yeah so sir at that point of time like you used to watch films and you were interested in films yeah absolutely i think um, um, you know a huge part of that journey was was, was also informed by the fact that um, you know you were part of that vhs generation you know and i recall um, this person would come to the house with this bag of vhs cassettes you know and you could pick them out from the, from the bags and all of that um one or uh, two was that every friday my father would um, take me to the local cassette store and, and you know i'd i'd he let me choose a cartoon to watch over the weekend um and then of course the arrival of of cable television post economic liberalization in 1990s you know, and, and we were one of the few neighborhoods because the the cable operator lived in our neighborhood so he we were sort of the first quote unquote, the the guinea pigs that sort of um, got hold of cable television and it was quite an interesting experience because suddenly um, you know you were no longer or rather i was no longer relegated to just the whole chitrahara dudarshan you know, you, i was watching all this content that was coming from from across the seas you know. so you know i was exposed to a, a huge amount of 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 media um, at a very very young at a very very young young age i would say yes so then how your directing journey started like you were doing uh, science and then how you directing um um i i eventually decided to not continue with my biotechnology course you know i mean only because you know the the teachers made it so boring you know like <laughs> unfortunately when when in fact when i think about it you know when i when i when i watch more and more films today like you know this 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 the science and the idea of finding the artistic merit or, or the kind of poetry in science is something that's quite um important when you're when you're when you're doing both things right even when you're doing films or you're doing uh, or you're doing art like you know i mean like the idea that um, the human body is a, is a piece of art when you want to speak of it in, in certain anatomical terms and, and vice versa um and i enrolled in 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 a media program and this is like in the middle early 2000s in in shillong i came back to shillong but i spent a huge amount of time playing basketball and um, um i had a small tiny camp court back then and i was constantly filming always you know i i would make like these strange bizarre um, um um footage so to say you know and then finally um i i after graduation i i enrolled in in, in a masters program at at jamia and it was this exposure to um, certain kind of cinema exposure to a lot of different individuals from from the filmmaking background that 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 also told myself that hey these guys are like quite normal you know and also only because i came from shillong you know like so you know, we don't really have a thriving film industry but when i saw these guys in the flesh and i saw them talking about their films and and these are filmmakers from the rest of india and i told myself you know it's, it's no big deal about these guys you know, even, even even i can do this and i swore to myself that the day that i finished graduation graduating from jamia that i would make a film come what may and i made a promise with one of my cast from my student films that you know come what may i will do this film and you will be acting in the film and surely enough pretty much a few months after i graduated from the university i was back in shillong and i made this film got 19/87 uh, non-existent budgets non-existent crew Uh, run and gun guerrilla uh, filmmaking very very punk in that sense and surely enough um, um you know I just realized that it was it was no it was no easy feat but i i did it you know in the sense that we completed the film and uh, in fact i even edited the film as well on, on this computer that was meant to just play um, um music and, and and watch cd's you know not even dvd's and then i edited the footage on this computer and then every every second day the uh, the computer would crash and i would go to the town center like this this market place called police bazaar carrying this this computer with me and, and telling these guys like you know it's crashed again and eventually these guys asked me like you know why why is your computer crashing so often like what well, what's wrong we've, we've done this we've done that 
you know, you, you, you know, it's it's very rare that a computer would crash so often. And I, and I said, well, actually, you know, I'm editing a film. And they're like, why are you editing a film? Like, this, this computer is not meant to be doing any kind of film edit. It's just meant for, like I said, you know, to, for you to play uh, music and then to play maybe solitaire. <laughs> um, yeah, but but I, I learned, you know, I learned filmmaking, like, really, like, the gritty way, you know, like, like hands-on experience, getting my, my hands and my... Um, 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 you know, um, um, like it was a very immersive, hands-on experience. You know, it wasn't like I knew an uncle or a cousin who worked in the industry or something like that. You know, um, and I think because of that, you know, my films have always been quite truthful in that sense, and they really speak of 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 time and space that that I wish to represent. I'm not saying that other filmmakers don't do that, but what I'm saying is that. Um, you know, because I don't have the pressure of being answerable to a producer, I've been able to make films exactly the way that I want to. And I think in the process, um, you know, uh, I would say I've been truthful as far as what I wish to represent. You. Yeah, okay. And sir, it was your first film. Like, what were the difficulties you faced when making it? Like, it must be very nervous. Well, like I said, um, um, you know, my 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 computer crashed. I think you need to put your mic off. Yeah. My, my my computer crashed pretty much every alternate day and then well, halfway through the shoot my 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 then girlfriend decided to dump me uh, <laughs> um you know i i i made my own lighting equipment um you know because we we couldn't afford to rent the, you know the lighting equipment anyways um i mean you name it like you know we we encountered every kind of problems like you know there, there was load shedding because Mehari has its fair share of, of load sheddings and load shedding meaning there was no electricity um yeah r running around in like middle of the night trying to find some dv tape this was of course we shot on a sony z5 running around the middle of the night to find out from our friends that they had a spare dv tape that edge dv tape that that we could use and then ask them if you could you know record over the footage that they had so it was, it was quite like I said, it was a, it was a very, you know, you know, DIY punk way of of making films, you know, and I think that uh, that is something that they don't teach you in film school. You know? I think, and I wish that more film schools taught people how to make films with non-existent budgets, as opposed to just showing them foreign films. You know? And sir, talking about the budget, what was the budget of the film, sir? No, that that is not that is something that I'm not even. <laughs> I think um, if I remember correctly, I walked into this businessman type character's office one day and I, you know, I said, you know, I literally said, I, I told him, I said, you need to produce this film. It's a very important film for Kasi people. And he, yeah, he, he pretty much, I think, gave me like 30,000 rupees. So that's like about what? With the equivalent of like, say, perhaps, um, I don't know how much the equivalent would be given the inflation that's happening in the country. But in other words, it, 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 was, it was very less amount of money. It was in pittance, so to say. And sir, how much time it took to like complete the film? I think we shot for about maybe one week to 10 days. It was a short film. Um, maybe one, one week to 10 days. I don't remember correctly, but um, it, it was still, it was still, um, you know, a ridiculous, um amount of money that we had to make a short film you know um but then when when, when it was done eventually um we received these um invites to um screen the film at this festival in guwahati you know and obviously we were very very excited and the person who was curating the festival in, in, invited us uh, you know we screened the film there and then, in fact, there was like there was this other film critic as well who was part of the organizing committee. You know, and, then, and then the film won pretty much best screenplay, best, best, best film, best film, best screenplay, and best cinematography as well. And at the end, at the end of the festival, like, you know, uh, you know, I went up on stage to pick up this you know, cert certificate and all of that. And, and and the organizers also said that you know I would be given a cash prize. And, Till today, I've not gotten the cash prize here. So, if those people are watching this, please give me back my cash prize. It's you know, it's due time now, and um, yeah, I'm not charging any interest, but yeah, please do it. 
Space shame for you. <laughs> but anyways, I mean, like, you know, anyone can organize a food festival these days, you know, and yeah. But um, yeah, it, you know, it sort of it sort of gave me that spark, that 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 kind of um, fuel to to continue doing what I enjoy doing, and most importantly, to continue making the films that I enjoy making. You know, so that that was in twenty twenty nine, twenty two thousand nine, two thousand ten, maybe. So that's a good few years there. Yeah, <laughs> great, great. So now your experience while making, we did not choose. Sir. So the what? We because we did not choose. Yeah, so that was um, I had done this documentary in twenty fifteen. I had done this documentary in twenty fifteen that um, was commissioned by Tata Institute of Social Sciences, this Mumbai, and it was part of their early career filmmaking fellowship. You know, and um, the proposal for the film was about um, the idea of of the border, the idea of, of um, you know, what makes someone, uh, you know, a Kasi person, that's the tribe, that's the community that I come from, um, what makes someone a person from that place, is, is it the fact that you're just born there, is it the fact that you follow a certain kind of a uh, cultural identity, so it was quite a nuanced film in that sense, in fact I was watching it the other day and I was telling myself, this, this is it's quite significant because the whole of North East is still going through that whole kind of identity assertion slash contestation and sometimes or rather in most instances it's, it's very very violent and very very problematic as you've witnessed in Manipur. Um, and then a huge amount of that research material that, that I had from where the clouds and um, informed because we did not choose because um, um, I found out that there was a huge number of, of laborers from from Shillong and Jenny the North East who volunteered or rather were conscripted um, to be part of the labor force during the First World War. You know? And I was able to relocate those graves of those people who served for the British government. I was able to meet some of the family members who uh, were part of the laborers, I mean, who were part, whose, whose grandparents, whose grandfathers and, and grand uncles were part of the Whole labor force, you know, and they had these amazing, fantastic stories to share about their whole journeys. And they had all these journals with them. They had all these photographs with them, and this huge amount of of, of literature, um, this, with these letters that were exchanged at that point of time, which was undiscovered until the point of time that I had made the film, you know. And in fact, um, there was a popular misconception that the there were only about 67 laborers who went to the war because there was a public monument that only had 67 names. And in fact, I found out that there were more than close to 2,000 people who left from um, the Kasi community at that point of time. You know, so it sort of opened this 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 kind of conversation, which was um, 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 not brought to light for the longest time. You know, and um, it, it was quite an interesting uh, a journey in the sense that. Um, yeah, I spent four years um, doing the research for the film, and, and I really enjoyed the non-fiction form because you know I I, I take it slow. You know, like I, I let I let I, I let the characters define the story as opposed to fiction, where you sit there and, and, and you write a character, right? And you imagine the character. So with, with the non-fiction form, I let I let the characters tell me how they want to tell the story. So I shoot in bits and pieces for a very very long period of time, and. I, Put it all together, and, and it's, it's an extremely satisfying experience because, um, you know, I I'm also being able to um, tell the story the way that this person um, 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 has experienced, like, or my understanding of, of this person's journey in life. You know? So, and I feel that I do justice in in that sense as well because you know it's not just my story; it's also this person's story as well, and and how I choose to interpret it. So that was because we did not choose. It was supported by the Commonwealth Creative Commission, um, the Goethe Centrum, and also by the Government of India as well, Meghalaya rather, so yeah. So you said for the research, it took four years like, to complete the film. How many years took? No, I, I researched and I filmed for, for, for a total stretch. I, I researched and I filmed for a total stretch of um, four years. 
Um, and I film all across um, Meghalaya. I film in, in, in south of India. I filmed, um, um, you know, in, in France. I filmed in England. I filmed in, in the UK, Wales. Because I was following the journey that these laborers made from the northeast, or to be more specific, from, from, from present day Meghalaya to Calcutta to Chennai, and then from Chennai, then Madras um, to the Middle East and then France, and um, a lot of the accounts of the missionaries um, that were made because they were, they were, they were assisted by um, the Welsh missionaries when they went to the war. So I went to meet, um, or rather I went to those places where um, the letters were being read out. And so they would write letters to the missionaries seeking for um, supplies, and, and um, these letters would be read out in church gatherings. To seek donation from the public, donations from the public, man. and I went to those places where they actually read those letters out, and you know, I got hold of people to read out those letters again in those churches. You know? So it, it was quite, um, it was quite interesting, looking at history as a performance in that sense. You know? So, and so your editing process while making this film because there must be a lot of footage, and you must be making the structure in the edit. Yes, I mean. Yeah, I mean, yes, um, um, you know, the, uh, the whole process of editing is, is you know, you, you're rearranging time and space, you know. And if any normal person would be saying that, you know, oh, I'm just arranging, rearranging time and space, you'd be thinking, you know, is, is he mad? But that is precisely what editing is all about. But, um, uh, you know, you, 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 you sit down and look at whatever footage that you've shot and then, you try to make some kind of, of an argument or you try and put your position across based on what you've shot, you know. Um, it, it's pretty much the same way with a lot of other filmmakers as well. So they shoot for a very, very long time, and, and, or rather they shoot for a certain stretch and then they edit that and then they shoot another another stretch. And um, you know, it's the same with my most recent uh, um, fiction, non-fiction piece as well. Um, about the rituals of, of the Kasi people and, and um, the attempt by RSS forces to appropriate that as Hinduism. And I'm also looking at how the Welsh missionaries were responsible for making or rather putting across religious practices of the Kasi people as barbaric, you know. Um, so same thing, I shot that in 2020 during, um, just, just during the lockdown. And then I finally finished editing the film just about a month ago. Um, yes, and the same process, like edits, you know, shooting for a very, very long time and then editing it and then putting it all together. And it's a complete satisfactory, a satisfying experience because, um, uh, you know, you, you see your vision um, coming true in front of you. Um, you see your arguments being crystallized and, and, and in, 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 in a visual form. And most important is that, you know, you also... Tell yourself that nothing goes in vain, no? because like you know, you're spending four years of your life, like uh, you know, uh, making these long films. But um, I'm glad because you know, um, where the clouds end, because we did not choose uh, you know, the blood and the border. My last film; these are all part of my trilogy on Kasi identity. That um, you know, I think, um, yeah, I mean, it took me more than ten years to finish, but um, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy that I finished the entire trilogy now. And, yeah, great, great. So now you experience while making Lonely the Flunner, sir. If I'm pronouncing it right or wrong, I don't know. No, no, you are pronouncing it right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was. You. I just wait for you to. Yeah. Um. It, it was a fantastic experience because um, any anyone who studies film, you know, or, or is a student of fine art will realize that. Um, the whole German expressionism, the whole noir tradition, sort of largely informed by the events that have happened in the world with regards to the First World War, you know, um, you know morally ambiguous characters, you know, stark shadows, the way in which you know, <clears throat> people choose to light or choose to paint um, is, is reflective of, of those tropes, you know, these morally ambiguous characters are driven by a certain kind of, or rather, or rather driven by a certain lack of conscience as well. You know? um, and I just finished making my first World War film, so it was like, it was a gradual progression to do a noir film. Um, 
but on, on, on a more linear, uh, realistic, historical context, I had just finished my graduation from, from, from university, from Jamia, and I was very, very keen to uh, do a graphic novel. So I sat down and, and I started making these graphic novel sketches um, about this detective, you know, who was living in Shillong and, and you know, was investigating the disappearance of these objects, you know. And he would hang out in the in 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 the in, in some of those little tea shops around town, and and you know was quite was quite a loner, and would hear these snippets of conversation that would eventually become his evidence. You know? And then um, the graphic novel idea was scanned for the longest time because I decided that you know I should just do films full time, and that's when I did 1987. And then. Um, in 2017, 18, just after I'd finished, because we did not choose, I really wanted to take a break from the non-fiction form. So I did that, and um, 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 I took time off to write the screenplay, and then I revisited the graphic novel. But then I realized that Shillong had also changed, you know, like, even though it was just a few years ago, but it had definitely changed because I had graduated in 2009, and it was 2017, 18, 18 actually and the thing is with small towns they become cities overnight you know so you know the places that i had set the graphic novel at had, had changed you know so i had to rewrite the characters I had to rewrite the locations and, and you know and also because the locations themselves were characters you know so i had to completely rewrite bits and pieces of, of the entire story but but it, it was it was it came out the way that i wanted it to you know and then i think that um um, you know, in fact, I just had a screening of it the other day in Delhi, and um, um, it's 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 it sort of has this cult-like status in in Geelong, you know, like, um, similarly, like you know, um, maybe with non-existent budgets, um, we managed to get hold of a local producer who was very instrumental to see the film get on its feet, you know, um, and then of course we also had the Indian Foundation for the Arts um, sponsor the film as well. Um, and um, Adil Hussein playing the lead, which was you know, absolutely um, um, a delight because he was such a fantastic actor to work with. And um, you know, the rest of the cast were pretty much first-time actors and who did a fantastic and a splendid job representing the characters and and, and you know, quote unquote, acting those characters the way that they were uh, meant to be played out. You know, and then keep in mind that. You know, Shillong does not really have a huge filmmaking acting tradition, but they did such a fantastic job, and you know, it was so satisfying, very nourishing to be working with people like that. You know, and, and yeah, I've been very, very fortunate because I've been able to do that again a few weeks ago. So, yeah. Great, great, sir. Sir, are you doing any of your future projects right now? Yeah, I just finished um, shooting the first half of my um, um, fiction film. Or my other fiction films, so um, um, yeah, I'm very, very excited to finish that as well. It's it's about young people f struggling to fit in in Shillong, and um, it's also about um, how I wish or how I want Shillong to be a place that's also inclusive of all kinds of people, you know, irrespective of their. Um, um, identities, whatever that word may be, or whatever that word might encapsulate. So, um, yeah, that way. And then, of course, um, just being able to um, say that, uh, you know, uh, films and art and cinema and, and, and any kind of cultural pursuit is the best way to bring people together. You know? So I had people from all different communities um, taking part in this production, just like I, I have had in the past. And, yeah, and then this idea that that I always have in mind that um, you know uh, um, it's important that we're all able to live together. Uh, sir, if somebody like wants to like assist you as an assistant director, how they can approach you, sir? I mean, you know, you. I'm I'm very happy if if you know people from the rest of the country would be keen to. Um, you know, assist me or, or would want to be part of my production. Because I think that, um, you know, I approach films completely different from, how say, perhaps a mainstream 
Bollywood film director or, or some other director from a space that has um, a filmmaking tradition would approach film. You know, um, I, I completely believe in a certain kind of punk DIY approach to filmmaking. Um, um, but yeah, I, I, I would really, uh, I would be very happy if, if you know, young people would be would, would be keen, or if young people are keen to assist me. Um, I don't know, like maybe send an email and send a CV and why you why you would want to make films, you know? Yeah. Uh, sir, you prefer like film school student, or they haven't gone to film school? It's um, that's that's. I I don't think I can answer that question. You know, I I I don't think I can answer. I don't think I can answer that question. I think um, you know, I've met um people from all walks of life. Of that matter, you know, people who have not studied art who are perhaps better storytellers or artists than people who have studied art formally. So I, 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 I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I don't think there's an umbrella scenario where you could club all these things together. Um, some of the best um, um, film people have been people who have not come from a filmmaking background or have studied formally. Um, you know, but but also at the same time, you know, there are people who have studied film and have also proven them their merit. You know that that um, they have studied film and, and you know this is what they've done. Um, I think it it all would boil down to a certain kind of a drive and a passion that people have to create. You know, and and, and how um, how willing or how keen they are uh, they are, um, you know, to go that extra mile, to go the whole nine yards, to be able to uh, make or pursue their their craft, you know. Um, so yeah, so I, I, you know, I wouldn't, not because you know, film school is extremely expensive. You know, I, I, I would rather suggest that, you know, they they work as an apprentice or do one of those shadow, um, or, or deal someone or follow someone who's making films and learn from this very very hands-on experience or spend time on YouTube looking at tutorials. Um, and then, of course, you know, have have a certain kind of a design and lust for life because that will inform your stories. You know, because you, know, you need to keep in mind that you know, there's either a technician or conceptualizer. A technician is someone who knows how to, you know, format your card or knows how to fix the lens on your camera. But a conceptualizer is someone who will take that equipment and and then use it to tell a story. You know? So, the moment I meet people who start discussing frame rates and and you know cameras and, and and all that technical stuff you know I'm, uh, you know i i know that it's just people flexing it doesn't matter what equipment you use i think it's how you use equipment and it's the same thing you know because you know i i do music as well and if someone tells me that oh like you know i've got this gadget or that gadget it, you know it, it's sometimes an attempt to try and cover up the lack of something out there I and mean, it's important to have those tools i just call them tools you know um but um the most important thing is is to know how to use those tools to tell your story. Great. So, your favorite films and filmmakers, or if you could recommend few. Um, I think given the circumstance of what India is going through, you know, and I, you know, I've I've watched his films, you know, years and years and years and years and years ago, like you know, Anand Padvardhan. Um, you know, who subsequently has informed a huge number of, of you know, filmmakers out there because of his films in the past. I think, um, you know, the time is ripe for India to be creating films such as the ones that we have witnessed in, in, in from Iran. You know, at one point of time, it was like every filmmaker's wet dream to make films like Kirostami without sort of really realizing the context. But I think the time is ripe for um, India to also create Kirstami's of their own. Um, so uh, yeah, having said that, you know, Kirstami and then um, um, I mean, I, I this is a very, <laughs> it's a very very long and exhaustive list of filmmakers out there. Um, I, you know, I, I I quite enjoy the, or rather enjoy the whole Italian new realism uh, tradition. You know, because of their simplicity. As far as like um, 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 the equipment that they had, and then you know making do with whatever they had, and and, and you know this was also largely um, um, the same with the whole French New Wave movement and all of that. Um, 
lately I've been watching quite a bit of Shaco there. That, 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 that kind of cinema that really, really um, reduces everything to, to a very human level. You know? um, how do people behave when confronted with, with the, the facts of life, so to say? Um, I mean, I've, yeah, there are tons and tons out there, but um, I, I think at the moment, and it's also very, uh, you know, it's, it's also very defined by the circumstance that I find in my life, that I find myself in, in, in life. You know, at, at the moment, um, those filmmakers, I mean, I do love watching a Kurosawa once in a while when I have my free time. Um, but I'm more interested in the circumstance that also uh, led to the making of the films, just merely as, as opposed to just a filmmaker, you know, but like I, or in other words, like, you know, for example, if, if, if a lot of people, are, because I do music as well, a lot of people ask me, oh, what's your favorite band? And, you know, I think um, I would always mention the band or the artist that um, that resonates a certain kind of, of, of the temperament of what the world was going through at that point of time through their music, or in this case, speaking of films, through their films, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so, any filmmaker from Meghali or any films from Meghali? Any filmmaker from Meghalaya? Oh, okay. Um, Dom, I mean, from the top of my head, Dominic Sangma has been doing very, very um, interesting, fantastic films, you know, um, largely, largely informed by, um, you know, a certain kind of a um, Tarkovsky and Russian um, um, long take. So it's, it's, it's interesting because you know, he's also made it his own and, and you know, he's obviously worked with people from his community, which makes it even much, much more exciting. And I think that his films are a breath of fresh air, even in the cinema landscape of, of Meghalaya and, and the rest of the country as well. You know, I mean, um, this is someone who's been able to make these films coming from a space that does not have a filmmaking culture. So that's you know, very, very inspiring. And that's very, very promising for the other filmmakers out there as well. Okay. So last question is, if somebody wants to become a filmmaker, what advice would you give to them? <laughs> I think filmmaker in the most traditional sense is a very dated word. I think we're all filmmakers right now. You know, we're, we're all filming. You know, we have a phone all the sort of time. We're constantly making TikTok videos. We're also making Instagram videos. We're uploading reels, etc. We are all filmmakers. And I and, and and I, you know, and I also tell you know students. Um, that it's important that um, you know to, to remember that you're always making images. You know, just because your film has not been selected for a film festival does not mean that you're not a filmmaker. Uh, we're constantly making images, but um, just keep at it. You know, like if there's one advice that I would give to anyone, is just keep doing it. You know, there's a, there's a time and space for everything. You know, the right time will arrive, but just keep at it. You know, just keep doing it. Sir, thank you so much, sir, for joining. No, thank you so much for it's my, inviting me. It's my pleasure.